Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pathology which we are doing from Miriam Robbins. My name is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. Pathology mein we are continuing uh, the pathology associated with endocrine organs and today our topic will be adrenal medulla. Or adrenal medulla ki uh, jo important pathology hai that's a tumor which we will discuss in a minute called pheochromocytoma. But before we start remember that adrenal medulla is embryologically, functionally, as well as structurally very distinct. If I can suggest it, I can add something here, a word very add. It's very distinct from adrenal cortex. So it has nothing to do structurally, functionally, embryologically. It's an altogether a different origin. It performs absolutely different function than adrenal cortex. Okay. It is populated by cells which are derived from neural crest cells. So adrenal medulla, mein, if this is your adrenal gland, so the medulla ke cells hai, they are derived from the neural crest cells or the supporting cells hai, they, which are called the sustentacular cells are also an important component of uh, adrenal medulla. Ab jo chromaffin cells hai, which are derived from the neural crest cells, they are so named because they are brown black color after exposure to potassium dichromate. So that's related to their staining color. They synthesize and secrete very important molecules called catecholamines and that actually happens in response to the preganglionic nerve fibers in the sympathetic nervous system. So, I mean, if you are watching many lectures before, se dekh hai, the organization of the autonomic nervous system in which adrenal medulla is basically um, a herb, it's kind of a ganglion in which preganglionic sympathetic fibers come and then there are small postganglionic fibers. So it's just like a ganglion which is usually alongside the spinal cord. So with the spinal cord, the uh, sympathetic change is going on in which the preganglionic fibers are going to be able to synapse and long postganglionic fibers are going to be able to synapse. So here the preganglionic fibers are going to be able to synapse with spinal cord. They are coming all the way to the adrenal medulla. They synapse here with the postganglionic fibers. Okay, so that's a very interesting story actually. Similar collection of cells are distributed throughout the body in extra adrenal paraganglion system. So I was telling you about that ganglions, just like that, in the whole body, mein, uh, largely in the uh, you know periphery of the spinal cord. But if we talk about parasympathetic system, ki baat kare, to near the organs as well. Just like ganglia mein synapse hota, bilkul is like synapse hota. The most important disease of the adrenal medulla are neoplasms. So usually, you don't hear adrenal medulla ka, uh, inflammation. Itna nahi sunte. Uska infection is not something very common, but what is more common is the neoplasm. Okay, and they include both neuronal neoplasms, including neuroblastoma, ya ganglion cell tumors, and the neoplasm which uh, originate from the chromaffin cells. So imagine, me barbar keh ki this adrenal medulla is just like a, a synapse area, jahan. Uh, just a ganglions may synapse hota, we say here synapse hota, it's a synaptic area. So, neural connection has got. So, therefore, there are some tumors which arise from the neuronal tissue, and the more common ones are actually which actually derived are from the chromaffin cells, which are the real cells which are developed from the neural crest cells, and those tumors are called pheochromocytomas. Very important because they are very much asked in examination. Okay, tumors of adrenal pheochromocytoma. So, take home message of today's video would be to understand pheochromocytoma. So, these are neoplasms composed of chromaffin cells, which, like other neo non neoplastic counterparts, synthesize and release catecholamines, and in some cases, also the peptide hormone. So, again, I mean, these are functional tumors. So, if this is adrenal gland, this is the cortex, and that in the middle is the medulla. Medulla ka usually kaam hai catecholamines produce karna, epinephrine, not epinephrine. So, agar ye jo chromaffin cells hai, they go neoplastic. If they go malignant, if they go tumor forming cells indeed. So, wo jo tumors banenge, they will also produce catecholamines. In fact, the catecholamines will be produced in higher amounts. Because now it's not a normal cell, it's a tissue which is malignant. So, um, more and more amount of catecholamines will be produced. Okay? These tumors are of special importance because although uncommon, they give rise to surgically correctable hypertension. Now, um, the point is that these neoplasms, um, obviously they are going to release catecholamines. So, they tend to cause hypertension. 
high blood pressure and this is one very important cause of hypertension which you can correct surgically so if in the exam they ask you okay kaun kaun si hypertension ke causes aap surgically correct kar sakte so ek example hai pheochromocytoma because if this is the adrenal medulla there is the tumor and because of this tumor there is hypertension increased blood pressure uh, surgically remove this and the blood pressure should be okay okay another example where you can do this is actually the aldosterone secreting adenoma so these aldosterone can also lead to hypertension and if you remove those adenomas aldosterone goes away hypertension goes away few chromocytomas usually uh, subscribe to a convenient rules of 10 this is one of the very famous rules in medicine rule of 10 10% of few chromocytomas are extra adrenal actually outside the adrenal gland occurring in the sites such as organs of zucker the grandel and carotid body where they usually are called paraganglioma so it's kind of the same thing uh, they are called pheochromocytoma when these chromaffin cells are present in the adrenal medulla but the chromaffin cells are also present in so many other locations 10% of the adrenal pheo uh, pheochromocytomas are bilateral yani dono glands mein honge obviously and this portion may rise to 50% in cases that are associated with family agar family history hai 10% of the adrenal pheochromocytomas are malignant so not all of them are malignant but 10% so that rule of 10 is pretty famous frank malignancy is somewhat more common in tumors arising in the extra adrenal tissue so carotid bodies mein agar koi tumor develop ho raha hai that is more prone to become malignant uh, as compared to those which are being produced in the adrenal medulla 10% of the adrenal pheochromocytomas are not associated with hypertension so that's a very small percentage actually so this is the other way to say this is that 90% of pheochromocytomas which are associated with adrenal gland are associated with hypertension so most of them can cause hypertension high blood pressure so all these rules are extremely important the rule of 10 okay so remember these rules of 10 for pheochromocytoma one traditional 10% rule that has since been modified per tends to familial cases it is now recognized that actually 25% of individuals with pheochromocytomas and paraganglioma harbor a germline mutation so it's a 25% addition to the 10% rule or a germline mutation in at least one of the genes including ret um which causes type 2 much so we we have discussed this already and f1 which is associated with neurofibromatosis type 1 von hippel lindau a uh, gene and uh, there are other genes which actually code for an enzyme called succinate dehydrogenase complex uh, these three succinate dehydrogenase complex b variant c and d variant so these are some genetic mutations which have been identified as linked to pheochromocytoma okay now Uh, clinically how do these patients present so up till now you must have picked it up that clinically these patients present usually with hypertension which is unexplained by any other thing so the dominant clinical manifestation of pheochromocytoma is hypertension observed in 90% of the patient approximately 2/3 of the patients with hypertension demonstrate paroxysmal episodes which are described as an abrupt प्रेसिपिटिशियस मतलब अचानक से उनको बैठे बैठे ब्लड प्रेशर पालपिटेशन हेड एक स्वेरिंग टू हमारी सब चीज़ें होंगी सो दीज आर द हाइपर टेंसिव सिम्टम्स आर द प्रेजेंटिंग कंप्लेन्स ऑफ द पेशेंट दीज एपिसोड्स मे ऑल्सो बी एसोसिएटेड विद पेन इन द एबडमिन और चेस्ट nausea vomiting isolated paroxysmal episodes so everything associated with hyper tension because they secrete a lot of catecholamines The cardiac complications have been attributed to what has been called the catecholamine cardiomyopathy or catecholamine induced myocardial instability as well as ventricular arrhythmias imagine a lot of epinephrine a lot of norepinephrine in the body the laboratory diagnosis is based on the demonstration of increased urinary excretion of free catecholamines so you have more catecholamines in your body you uh, excrete more of them in the urine simple simple thing Isolated benign pheochromocytomas are treated with surgical excision with multifocal lesion uh, require long term treatment where hypertension has to be controlled and you have to block the effects of epinephrine or norepinephrine okay so these are the most common tumors guys they belong to chromaffin cells morphologically the range is a small form a small circumscribed lesions confined to the adrenal um, uh, they can also sometimes Uh, lead to hemorrhagic masses so bleeding can happen in these tumors okay large lesions tend to be hemorrhagic necrotic obviously it's, it's associated with the size on microscopic examination few chromocytomas are composed of polygonal to spindle shaped chromaffin cells and their supporting cells so that's not something that they will test you on the examination right 
Therefore, the definitive diagnosis of the malignancy in chromosoma is based on the presence of metastasis. So this is something important and this you can actually pick up on a CT scan as well, right? Right, so what other type of tumor? Neuroblastoma. Now again, I told you that in the adrenal medulla, the tumors can be either uh, derived from chromaffin cells or they are derived from the neural tissue. So if they are derived from the neuronal tissue, neuroblastoma is the most common extracranial solid tumor of the childhood. So it happens in childhood. These neoplasms occur most commonly during the first five years of life and may arise during infancy first five years okay neuroblastomas may occur anywhere in sympathetic nervous system and since i told you that these adrenal medulla uh, are actually the you know receptive end for the preganglionic fiber so they are actually connected with the sympathetic nervous system and uh, therefore these neuroblastoma actually can happen in any uh, part of the sympathetic system adrenal medulla being one of it okay most of them are sporadic, uh, but familial cases have also been reported. So that's basically it. Simple story, simple, simple story. So if you talk about adrenal medulla pathology wise, so you only have to remember if you ask me technically, pheochromocytoma, how? So they will present to you a patient who comes to the clinic with episodes of hypertension, palpitation, headache, chest pain, tremors, sweating. From there, you pick up that we are talking about uh, a patient who has more catecholamines in the body. And then you will obviously order different scans and laboratory uh, findings. And you know that in the laboratory, you have to diagnose it with a few lab tests and you will get to the diagnosis. So simple stuff but very important stuff, okay? So let's stop it here. Remember that uh, the laboratory diagnosis is very important to identify and confirm the cases of uh, uh, pheochromocytomas, okay? Uh, you have to demonstrate that there is increased urinary acid free catecholamines as well as their metabolites such as VMA or metanephrine. So these are the definitive diagnosis. So you get a patient with the symptoms, you suspect this is pheochromocytoma, you either do the scans or you do the laboratory diagnosis or both of them, depends upon the scenario of the patient. So that's all for today's video. All the very best and we will meet in another video. Uh, please subscribe the channel, share the video with your colleagues and hope you are enjoying these lectures. Take care of yourself.